Hello everybody, welcome back to Concrete Play, and today I'd like to talk about gameplay. I'd like to talk about gameplay uh, in a couple of different ways, and I think the easiest way to do that is in the most concrete way possible. Analyze a game while we play it. So this is Cities Skylines. It's from Paradox Interactive, and it is a fairly solid game. Lots of people like it. I'm going to go ahead and show you what's good and bad about this game. And this game is great for that purpose because the bad things are obvious and the good things are obvious. The first and most important feature that this game brings to the genre is curved roads. That sounds kind of silly, right? It's actually a major feature. If you've only played this game casually, you may not have figured out how important, how important these curved roads are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. First things first, you have these roads here. These are your lifelines in and out of your city. And if you try and connect them, you'll see immediately you'll see immediately that they're not on a straight line. I think this is on purpose, specifically to tell you stop being on the grid. Another thing you'll notice quickly as you play the game is that space is not as much of a, of a premium as it normally is. So there's a reward for um, not going as dense as possible, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. So how would you normally bring these roads into your city? Well, normally you'd bring them in like, uh, combine them into one road and then bring them down. But you have to keep traffic flow in mind. This is going to be the heaviest intersection in your city. So how are you going to make that work? Well, the way I do it is I use a roundabout. So you see you've got these one-way roads here. I'm going to go ahead and switch us into one-way road mode. And we're going to build ourselves a little roundabout. By switching on the curved road, we can actually build roads in whatever sort of shape we want. I'm going to be building a nice big roundabout just because it's easiest to measure, but there's nothing wrong with uh, you know taking the short way, and we'll just build this way. You don't have to build these round ones. I just find that they tend to come out actually much rounder if I do this. Uh, they otherwise come out really um, oblong. There we are. So we have this nice roadway, and it goes around like this. If we don't like that direction, we can switch it up. And uh, in general, I recommend switching it to the other direction. So we'll just, and then right-click, bang. Uh, hello. There we are. Apparently, that switched everything. Sounds good to me. Um, so now we have a roadway that goes counter uh, counterclockwise. And then we can just connect in our other road with a straight line here. Oh. Yeah. There we go. So this is a rather large intersection, but it has some advantages to it. One of the great advantages is that the way that the road gets processed, these stops are not stop intersections. Instead, people will stick to the inside lane and pass without having to actually stop at a traffic light. That's a huge advantage for traffic purposes. And I'm talking about a nitty-gritty detail of this game. If you're like, oh, come on, uh, talk, give me some examples of what this gameplay means. Well, this is a core feature of the game. Traffic is a core feature of every city-building game. And the ability to do something new with traffic is really important. But it's not just roundabouts. Let me go ahead and build us a, uh, uh, a place for our people to live. So we're going to come out here and we're going to build ourselves a little uh, residential district. Now normally, how would you build a residential district? You would probably build it as a grid, right? Put them as dense as possible. The game actually punishes you for putting in as dense as possible roads. Uh, let me show you right now. So if you were going to build as densely as possible, this is what you would do. And you would have eight spaces between these roads, see? And then that, that would be as dense as your residential areas could be. But there are several punishments for doing this. The first punishment is that there's a lot, there's a happiness hit. If your flat, if your uh, uh, area has another area directly on its border, you're going to take a happiness hit. The second big problem with this approach is that if you upgrade your roads, you've just lost two and you are down to six with rather than eight. Where are you going to ever need to upgrade your roads? Well, of course you are. Even if it is a residential area when you start, um, there's never any guarantee how long you're going to be able to keep that area low traffic. Traffic rising is a big part of how these games work. So let's go ahead and build ourselves a nice 
uh, residential area. Now how are you going to do it? Well, one way you can do it is to still build it in a grid, but space everything out so that there's eight rather than so there's a ten rather than eight. Um, that means that when you upgrade your roads, it'll still be as dense as possible, but you'll still take happiness hits and the grid is not ideal for travel. So if I were going to talk about how to do this with a perfect grid, I'd be like, okay, well I'll do this and then I'll bring it down here and then I'll come across uh, you know, like this and I'll bring it back up here and then I'll come across I got a nice gap here and I'll be able to bring that down into super density if I need it. But what happens if I put a fire, um, you know, a firefighter's place right here? In order for that firefighter to get over to here, he's got to go around this square. And the more intersections you put in, the less of a penalty he'll take, but the longer it will take at each of those intersections because each intersection is a traffic hit. So what you really want to do for optimal distribution of things like firefighters is to make your roads curved out from where you're planning to put your utilities. So for example, if I do this, and then do this, and then go into straight roads, what I've just done is I have created an area where if I put fire services here or health services here and they are mapped along the roads for how far they can reach people they'll be able to travel down these curved roads much much faster than if those roads were straight now at this scale it doesn't matter that much but as you continue to expand the scale becomes larger and larger and you can continue to use curved roads to get a nice uh, to get a nice savings and not have to do that. And of course when you don't need to travel uh, you can still use straight roads and that will allow you to get a dense population. But these lots are going to be a lot happier than these lots uh, because these lots have no space between them. These lots do have space between them and that means that they're going to have added happiness. In addition, the extra space and the crushed space gives you opportunities to put down facilities that are not, uh, you know, four by four. So round roads or curved roads really do affect the way that this game works. And it is a mistake to just think that they are suboptimal and throw them away. I know a lot of people who've played City Skylines briefly did exactly that. They're like, uh, obviously these roads are suboptimal. We'll just, you know, just not use them. We'll use everything straight all the time. And they never noticed that you need to use roundabouts for traffic purposes and you need to use uh, curved roads to reduce travel distances for, uh, for things like uh, schools and firemen. So all told, you can save a lot if you do it right. So now let's, now that we've covered something good, let's talk about something bad. While this curved road actually adds a lot more city planning options than you might think, the rest of the game takes all of its city planning options away. Hmm. There's no arrows on this one. I didn't really expect there to not be any arrows. I actually don't know what happens. It's been a long time since I've played a map with no arrows. Uh, arrows normally tell you which direction the water is flowing. So if there's no arrows, I'm not sure how that works. So this game has, you know, the same thing that SimCity 2000 had. You've got to provide water and electricity to all of your people. The problem is that this isn't really adding anything to the game. This is what we call, what I call, a blocker. Um, the idea here is that the game is uh, uh, is just slowed down by this need. It's not really um, it's not really difficult. It doesn't require any sort of clever strategy. You just have to have enough money to be able to afford to put down plumbing for the rest of your town, which is really boring. Uh, it's, it's kind of a sad uh, conclusion. You would really like to have this be more interesting. When SimCity 2000 came out, it was new, it was fresh, it was super interesting. But in this game, it's not. Uh, it hasn't been interesting since SimCity 2000, and you can guess how old that is. Similarly, this game has the option of uh, green versus uh, not-so-green energy. Unfortunately, those options are not as um, useful as you might think. The penalty for not going green isn't very strict, and the penalty for going green isn't very strict. Uh, going green is very affordable. Going not green is very affordable. 
um, as a you know as someone who works in green energy for a living you kind of think oh well I don't want this I want to you know do solar I want to do uh, wind uh, and you can there's nothing wrong with that but there's also no benefit to it so the pollution is not important uh, and the um, Oh, that's not where I want it, sorry. The pollution is not important, and neither are the uh, penalties for using green energy in terms of lower um, uh, lower outputs and stuff like that. None of that stuff matters at all. Similarly, uh, these lines are pretty standard. Um, you don't really feel anything with them. You just, whatever, who cares? So we'll just run line here. But we do need to bring line all the way down to here. And so, you know, as I've put uh, some power up here and I need power all the way down there, that's something where maybe you could optimize it. But it doesn't feel new or fresh. It's just a matter of, oh, yeah, I've got to run power lines across the whole planet. Uh, or maybe put in some wind power down there or something or place this better. Uh, I didn't really look at the map before I started. And then, of course, you have your zoning, which is always fun. And we will start by zoning near the power just so that we can get our power grid started. And then we can unpause. Zoning is also one of those things that should be fun and interesting, but it's really not. Um, there's nothing There's nothing compelling about zoning in this game. Uh, zoning was never very compelling, per se. It, it existed in the first games as a way to allow uh, for you to place things that weren't buildings. It was a great innovation at the time because you were able to uh, to put down abstract concepts rather than individual buildings. But that hasn't really gotten more interesting over time, so it's still very static and very staid. The one advantage to this game over previous games is that it does have a district system, which is very similar to zoning, but you zone whole districts rather than just individual plots of land. Zoning is important for the purposes of uh, how roads work, obviously, but it's not very important for how it actually plays. It doesn't actually play very interesting. It might be more interesting if, when you zoned something, you had the ability to zone it in ways that were compelling. For example, instead of just zoning everything, you might want to leave gaps um, for some reason or another. And that's true to some extent. If I left gaps between these lots, each of these lots would be happier. But since I have a lot of space behind them, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and even if I was worried about it, a little bit of happiness isn't worth the hit on the density. Uh, density isn't critical in this game, but it's best not to just totally waste it for no reason, right? So a lot of this gameplay is very, very boring, is what I'm getting at. Uh, the game has a lot of typical genre elements, but they're not implemented very well. Um, it's not very interesting to do these things. It's not very challenging to do these things. However, that doesn't necessarily act against the game. Because these things are bog standard, you, you immediately think of, uh, you know, how you might want to do things and uh, you know, you can plan it out in your head and then it's all automatic just blocking out all of these districts. And that's kind of an interesting idea, but I don't really see it as being as interesting or compelling as uh, having a feature actually be interesting and compelling. And now, of course, we need some of this guy, so we'll just block some out. And again, it's not very interesting or compelling to do this. Uh, but we have to go back and we have to manage all the nitty-gritty details. And uh, nitty-gritty details, I, I adore nitty-gritty details. I'm the kind of person that thinks that space engineers should have more nitty-gritty details. But the nitty-gritty details need to matter, and these two frequently just don't. Um, they're not fun to optimize, they're not fun to... Uh, to work around. They're just there for the sake of slowing you down uh, and being genre standard. That's a total shame. I really would like them to be much more interesting. 
Here you can see our roundabout in action. You can see how there's no traffic lights, no stopping. Everyone just goes where they want to go. Pretty nice. So all in all, probably the biggest advantage this game has over its contemporaries is that it is gorgeous. Um, while each individual model is kind of dull, when you combine it into a final effect, it is gorgeous at every scale. It looks great when you're zoomed out, it looks great when you're zoomed in, and it just feels good to look at. So even though the nitty gritty details are boring and uninspired, it's still a fun game and you feel like you want to play this game to build a city rather than to win or to lose. So the the strength that is hiding behind that is uh, uh, something else entirely. Not every game has to be played to win or lose and if your gameplay is terrible it's okay as long as it doesn't get in the way. So I have uh, a lot of respect for games which are just well designed. Uh, I really enjoy it when a game can um, uh, can really impress me with every second of its of its features. But that doesn't have to be how it works. It's perfectly fine to have a game which plays like crap as long as it's still fun to play. It can be an unbalanced mess, but if it's fun, that's fine. Uh, a good example of this would be Fallout 4 or any of Bethesda's games. They're all unbalanced messes, but they're fun to play. And that is certainly true of Cities Skylines. So 99% of its content is very, very samey. It doesn't have a, a strong feel to it. The progression is very stale and there's no choices as you're moving as you're moving forward. You can't choose to research solar panels for example. They just come when they come. Uh, and those could be considered weaknesses. The core gameplay is kind of dull. But uh, the combination of roads that can curve and a gameplay that doesn't get in the way allows you to build cities that can't be built in other games in any other city building game. And that's a real strength. Cities Skylines obviously knew what it was going to do coming into this because the very first thing they did is release modding solutions. And this entire game is moddable uh, right out of the gate to a level where you don't even have to mod uh, you know, using Blender or something. You can just mod right here in the main menu. Dum, dum, da, dum, dum. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Map editor, asset editor, theme editor, right here in the main menu. Because of this and the workshop integration, this game is very customizable and you can change your experience to match what you'd like it to be. So this is a very creative game and they knew that going into it. Cities Skylines obviously knew that its primary gameplay was going to be looking great and feeling like you've created something interesting. So they just tucked all of the hard stuff under the carpet. They're like, yeah, SimCity 2000 had a whole bunch of hard stuff in it. You had to really struggle to balance the city's budget, and you had to really build carefully. And they were like, yeah, but that's just not fun. We want the, character, the player to be able to build whatever they want. Fine. I have a couple of reservations about that because they did include some genre standards that get in the way of that. Uh, plumbing, for example. Plumbing is just... You never look at an over, you know, at a map of the city and go, "That's some lovely plumbing." Um, so they could have gotten rid of that if they really wanted to pare stuff down. But what I'm trying to say here is, if you have one core thing that makes your game special, you don't have to perfectly balance the rest of your game. As long as you know what your focus is, it should be on something that the players can do with you, and they can't do somewhere else. And it should be something that the players find fun. And that finding fun thing, that might not be game balance. Your players might not care if your game is balanced. Minecraft isn't balanced. Your players might not even care if there's a challenge. A lot of people just play Minecraft in creative mode all the time. And you just saw me playing City of Skylines in infinite money mode. So 
when you are designing your game, you don't have to struggle so hard to come up with a nice slick package that works well together, but you do have to struggle to come up with something that will inspire your players to keep playing, whether that's a new kind of feature for the genre or whether that is giving them the freedom to create. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll leave a link below to um, Cities Skylines uh, if you if you want it. It's a little bit pricey, especially since there's DLC now, but if you like city building games, it can make some gorgeous cities. Have a good one.